Hi friends, today I am going to start the first unit that is diversity in the living world from class 11 biology. So in this class 11 biology there are 5 units. So the first unit is this one. So here are some description written about this unit. So this is not so important. Just uh, let's go here. Yeah. Uh, in every unit there is something written about one person. So in this, uh, there is some important points are there. Just let me know you what that. Uh, this is, uh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So the important part is the Darwin of the 20th century. So he is known as Darwin of 20th century. Okay. This is important highlight this part next important thing is that uh, he also pioneered see here there is written this thing he also pioneered the currently accepted definition of biological species okay this is the thing now the accepted definition of biological species that is given by him only so these two parts are important and also it came in the exam so just follow these parts just uh, remember these all things and just remember his uh, achievements okay like the balzan prize in 1983 the international prize for biology in 1994 and the crawford uh, prize in 1999 so this thing you need to remember next thing is the leaving world let's go to the chapter so in the first introduction part that how wonderful is the living world, the wide range of living types. This is just like literature. So there is nothing important about this part. Let's go to what is living. Okay. So uh, we have four subtopics which are important subtopics. So the first subtopic is what is living. So this is exactly uh, here important thing I'll show you. Just uh, let me read from the starting. When we try to define living, we conventionally took a look for distinctive characteristics exhibited by living organisms, growth, reproduction, ability to sense environment and mount a suitable response come to our mind. Immediately as unique features of living organisms, one can add a few more features like metabolism, ability to self-replicate, self-organize interact and emergence to this list okay so this is uh, um, actually these are the characteristics it is talking about the living now the first characteristic is growth okay see you can see this thing highlight this part this actually important means this can come in the exam this is increase in mass and increase in number of individuals are twin characteristics of growth if the question comes that what is the twin characteristics of growth that is increase in mass and increase in number so these are the characteristic uh, of growth okay so we can refer it as if a um, two definition can arise from this growth part if we take about means if we tell growth so what can we say there are two things like one is increase in mass can also be growth and also increase in number can also be growth that's the thing next uh, part is all uh, so this is all living organisms grow so this is the first characteristic a multicellular organism grows by cell division in plants this growth by cell division occurs continuously throughout their lifespan in animals this growth is seen only up to a certain age However, cell division occurs in certain tissues to replace lost cells. Unicellular organisms grow by cell division. Uh, now, uh, these are just written. This is very simple. It's just talking about the growth and how we are growing. So, one can easily observe this in in vitro cultures by simply counting the number of cells under the microscope. So this only happens in the unicellular organisms that they grow by the self division. This we can observe through 
an unicellular organism in under a microscope then uh, in majority of higher animals and plants growth and reproduction are mutually exclusive events this is one important most important so in majority of higher animals oh, yeah higher animals and plants growth and reproduction are mutually exclusive events these two are not inclusive if the question comes about this thing that it is exclusive or inclusive you need to understand this thing that it is exclusive events these are not same things next uh, in case of only this is in case of uh, higher animals and plants okay so higher uh, group of plants and animals one must remember that increase in body mass is considered as growth uh, and uh, non living objects also grow if we take increase in body mass as a criterion for growth mountains boulders and sand mountains do grow so this is one exception that we got from this part this is mountains boulders and sand mounds do grow okay but one thing that we can understand that that we can means we can uh, find the different uh, difference between them is that mountains these non living things grow from outside how because these mountains boulders and sand mounds what it has written about is uh, growing by accumulating uh, this uh, accumulation of material on their surface by that only they are growing not by uh, inside like uh, we humans or any living organism what happens is that from inside their cell divides and then we grow that's a thing that's the difference between living and non living in case of growth and also there is as it has some uh, one uh, exception so what is happening is that it's not the defining property of living organisms this is one important point so another thing is growth therefore cannot be taken as defining property of living organisms so in this ncert there uh, there are certain things there uh, six characteristics from that um, this growth is uh, no actually these all are characteristics from that growth is not a defining property then this reproduction is not also not a defining property as it has also some exceptions then um, where, wherever there is some exception that is the that is not a defining property that's the thing and this metabolism is a defining property cellular organization is a defining property and this consciousness is a defining property these are the things which is mentioned in ncrd that these all are characteristics this, there are five characters sorry there are five characteristics and um, the reproduction is uh, another thing which is not a defining property now we'll understand why this happens okay uh so reproduction likewise is a characteristic of living organisms in multicellular organisms reproduction refers to the production of progeny possessing features more or less similar to those of parents invariably and uh, implicitly we refer to sexual reproduction uh, then organisms reproduce by asexual means also like fungi multiply this is important actually uh, what is this it is see i'm highlighting this thing fungi multiply and spread easily due to the millions of spores they produce in lower organisms like yeast and hydra we observe budding in planaria flatworms we observe true re regeneration that is a fragmented organism regenerates the lost part its body and becomes a new organism and that's it this much is really important and it also came as question this question came that uh, in planaria what uh, what is the means of uh, uh, means reproduction that is regeneration that is true regeneration okay so this is the thing so this you need to underline and uh, you need to keep in this mind and uh, next thing is the fungi the filamentous algae the protonema of mosses all easily multiply by fragmentation when it 
comes to unicellular organisms like bacteria unicellular algae or amoeba reproduction is synonymous with growth this thing again one important thing that is increase uh, that unicellular algae means all the uh, means uh, in case of unicellular just a second yeah unicellular organisms are re uh, their reproduction is synonymous with their growth why because when one suppose let me take the example of uh, amoeba so amoeba when it uh, divides uh, when it uh, grows means one cell is divided that means one amoeba is again reproduced so that is the thing that is the meaning of this thing that reproduction is synonymous in case of there is a uh, unicellular organisms that is increase in number of cells that's the thing we have already defined growth as equivalent to increase in cell number or mass hence we notice that in single celled organisms we are not very clear about the uses of these two terms growth and reproduction further there are many organisms which do not reproduce this thing also important this is what that um, many organism which do not reproduce that this much infertile couples mules sterile or sterile walker bees that's that's it etc and many more are also there next is hence reproduction also cannot be an all inclusive defining characteristic of living organism of course no non living object is capable of reproducing or replicating by itself that's the thing no non living object is capable of reproducing so this is also not an uh, reproduction also not an all inclusive characteristic of living organism so this is also not a defining property next is another characteristic of life is metabolism all living organisms are made of chemicals small and big belonging to various classes sizes functions etc are constantly being made and changed into some other biomolecules these conversions are chemical reactions or metabolic reactions there are thousands of metabolic reactions occurring simultaneously inside all living organisms be they unicellular or multicellular all plants animals fungi and uh, microbes exhibit metabolism so this is the thing so what what do you mean by metabolism actually there is uh, like a lot of chemical reaction happens inside our body uh, so for example we are we are taking we are doing respiration that is also it has some chemical reactions inside that so some total this point you need to underline that is highlight actually the sum total of all chemical reaction um, are is known as metabolism no non living object exhibits a metabolism metabolic reactions can be demonstrated outside the body in cell free system next uh, an isolated this is also important what it is an isolated metabolic reaction outside the body of an organism performed in test tube is neither living or non living this is the thing okay so this is another point which is important and it can come in the exam so you need to understand that when any a uh, metabolic reaction is happening outside the body in any lab or something like that uh, that is we don't know uh, that it is uh, living or non living next is hence while metabolism is a defining feature of all living organisms without exception isolated metabolic reactions in vitro are not living things but surely living reaction yeah this thing that they uh, that is not a living thing 
but it's a living reaction this can come in uh, assertion reason type question also and another thing that you need to uh, highlight is that uh, while metabolism is defining character so it's a defining character that you need to understand that it is without exception and it's a defining character next is cellular organization of the body is the defining uh, feature of life forms that is only metabolism cellular organism organization next perhaps the most obvious so this this is the same thing cellular organization or metabolism that's the same thing next is perhaps the most obvious and technically complicated feature of all living organisms is this ability to sense their surrounding or environment and respond to these environmental stimuli which could be physical chemical or biological so this is one thing which is really important that is uh, the definition itself is important but uh, the most obvious technically complicated feature of all living organisms is this ability to sense their surrounding or environment and respond to these environmental stimuli which could be physical chemical or biological okay so the power or the sense that we have that we can uh, we can we could sense or the consciousness that is known as that is a very complicated and it's a also technically it is technically complicated feature this thing you need to remember so if a uh, question ask uh, that uh, what is the technically complicated feature that we have uh, is uh, this consciousness next is we sense our environment through our sense organs okay we know this that we sense through sense organs and another thing that you need to know oh, yeah so Uh, our sense organs we can sense or uh, we can uh, sense our environment then as plants respond to external factors like water uh, light temperature other organisms pollutants etc plants can even respond to these things all organisms from prokaryotes to the most complex eukaryotes can sense and respond to environmental cues photo period affects reproduction in seasonal breeders both plants and animals so this much uh, just remember okay handle chemicals entering this is also important and that's it next uh, thing that you need to remember is that this thing let me highlight this also yeah so human being is self consciousness where it is going yeah so has self consciousness human being has self consciousness okay so here human being is the only organism uh, that who is aware of himself okay and he he is itself self consciousness so consciousness therefore becomes the defining property of living organism this is another defining property next is when it comes to human beings it is all the more difficult to define the living state we observe patients lying in coma in hospitals virtually supported by machines which replace hearts and lungs the patient is otherwise brain dead the patient has no self consciousness are such patients who never come back to normal life living or non living yeah this is another thing uh, so this this is a question which is asked by ncrt so now i'll answer this question this is actually what he is living why i i can reason also i can give reason uh, this is why because uh, the person who is laying in coma in hospital he is responding to medicines okay he is responding towards medicines whether if there is a non living object any non living object if we consider like a pen also what happens if if it gives medicines or the treatment will it respond towards it no but human being whether it is living 
uh, means it is uh, in the living state in the active state or he is in coma he can respond to medicines or the treatment which is which is uh, which the doctor is giving to it so that's the thing that he is living okay next is in higher classes you will come to know that all living phenomena are due to underlying interactions properties of tissues are not present in the constituent cells but arise as a result of interactions among the constituent cells uh similarly properties of cellular organelles are not present in the molecular constituents of the organelle but arise as a result of interaction among the molecular components comprising the organelle the these interaction result in the emergent properties at a higher level of organization the phenomena is true in the hierarchy of organizational complexity at all levels therefore we can say that living organisms are self replicating evolving and self regulating interactive uh, systems capable uh, of responding to external stimuli this thing i should uh, i think you, you should uh, underline see uh, this is what therefore we can say that living organisms are self replicating evolving and uh, self regulating interactive systems capable of responding to external stimuli biology is the story of life on earth biology is the story of evolution of living organisms on earth all living organisms present past and future are linked to one another by the sharing the common sharing of the common genetic material but to varying degrees these all you will read in the higher classes means higher classes when the 12th class also there is uh, the about this so we will read there okay next thing is diversity in the living world yeah so this is another important sub topic we came to second sub topic if you look around you will see a large variety of living organisms be it potted plants insects birds or your pets or the other animals and plants there are also several organisms that you cannot see with your naked eye but they are all around you like the microorganisms okay if you were to increase the area that you make observations in the range of variety of organisms that you see increase obviously if you were to visit a dense forest you would probably see a much greater uh, number and kinds of uh, living organisms in it each different kind of plant animal or organism that you see represents a species the number of species this is important this thing mentioned in the ncrt this is important what is that that's the number of species uh, that are known and described range between 1.7 to 1.8 million okay so highlight this part and remember this thing this refers to biodiversity or the number and types of uh, organisms present on the earth so what do you mean by biodiversity biodiversity the is the is the variety of organisms present on earth okay we should remember here that as we explore new areas and even old ones new organisms are continuously being identified that is the thing so uh, this is the thing that every time there is a new organism which is being uh, discovered so as stated earlier there are millions of plants and animals in the world we know the plants and animals in your area by their local names these local names would be would vary from place to place even within a country probably you would recognize the confusion that would be created if we did not find ways and means to talk to each other to refer to organisms we are talking about so hence there is a need to standardize the naming of living organisms such that a particular organism is known by the same name all over the world and this process is called nomenclature so the process of naming the organism is known as nomenclature okay the process of giving name to a particular organism uh, is known as nomenclature next obviously nomenclature or 
naming is only possible when the organism is described correctly and we know uh, to what organism the name is attached to this is identification so this is exactly what we do is that we give the name of the organism according to by its identification or its characteristic or whatever it uh, it were to what it makes a different uh, from any other organism that's the thing next is in order to facilitate the study number of scientists have established procedures to assign a scientific name to each known organism okay so scientists have given uh, the solution that uh, scientific name is to be given to every organism next is that this is acceptable to biologists all over the world uh, for plants this is also important this is very important actually for plants scientific names are uh, based on agreed principle and criteria provided by international code of botanical nomen uh, by no sorry yeah botanical nomenclature that is icbn and also animals uh, by iczn okay so iczn means international code of uh, zoological nomenclature okay so this is the thing that you need to highlight and uh, the factors uh, they only represent they only give the names and they are identified they are proved there so next thing is that the scientific names ensure that each organism has only one name description of any organism should enable the people in any part of the world to arrive at the same name okay this is the only reason to give the scientific names to every organism they also ensure that such a name has not been used for any other known organism this is also very important otherwise there would be a great confusion biologists follow universally accepted principles to provide scientific names to known organisms each name has two components the generic name and the specific epithet this is also important this is what that each name is uh, provided and this is known as binomial nomenclature that is already highlighted by ncrd it is already written in bold so each name has two components the generic name and specific epithet first name is generic name second is specific epithet okay so this naming system given by carlos linnaeus this scientist the name of the scientist also you need to remember that this binomial nomenclature uh, this uh, way of naming the organism is given by carlos linnaeus is being practiced by biologists all over the world the naming system using a two word format was found convenient let us take the example of mango to understand the way way of providing scientific names better the scientific name of mango is written as mangifera indica so uh, one thing i'm telling you that the, in this ncrd whatever is written whatever scientific name is written just you need to keep in mind further there are some tables also there in the next pages so you need to also completely remember that thing because it is really important so next thing uh so we need to i'm and uh, highlighting this part you should also highlight that suppose mango we tell mangifera indica next uh, to uh, what is happening here is see this in this name mangifera represents the genus while indica in a particular species uh, or a specific epithet that is the thing that i said that genus is given first then the specific epithet is given second okay the second word is specific epithet first word is mang uh, the genus okay the other universal rules so this rules this is also very very important i'm underlining it all the rules are important because it just come like as it is in exams the biological names are generally in latin and word uh, and written in italics they are latinized or derived from latin irrespective of their origin 
okay so uh, why this is done like this uh, why it is written in italics because it is to show that it is uh, from the latin origin okay the first word is in a biological name represents the genus while the second component denotes the specific epithet both the words in a biological name when handwritten are separately underlined or printed in italics to indicate their latin origin that thing which i said in from the first point that is written in third point that uh, the why we do it why we uh, we print it on italics because to indicate that their latin origin okay the first word denoting the genus starts with a capital letter while the specific epithet starts with a small letter this thing again we need to do while the specific epithet starts with a small letter it can be illustrated with example like this mangifera indica see here mangifera the first word is uh, or the genus it is written the first word is written in the uh, first letter is written in capital and the second word that is uh, indica or the or the specific epithet the first letter is uh, written in small next thing this one is also important name of the author appears after the specific epithet that is at the end of the biological name this thing okay so this much you need to understand why there is written that mangifera indica lin so this means that carl linnaeus who has identified this species or the or given its name so he needs uh, his name also will be there but after uh the uh, mangifera indica then after that there will be the name also it should be in abbreviated form okay not written in full it indicates that this species was first described by linnaeus since it is nearly impossible to study all the living organisms it is necessary to devise some means to make this possible okay so classification now so classification is the process by which anything is grouped into convenient categories based on some easily observable characters okay so this is actually important what this is classification is process by which uh, the anything is grouped into convenient categories based on some easily observable characters okay like these are some examples that is given here for example we easily recognize groups see how they are written so next thing that is important from here is this okay i'll i'll highlight this thing and i'll show you so uh here you must recognize that taxa can indicate categories at a different at a very different levels So this is another important thing. Then is plants also form a taxa. Wheat is also a taxa. Similarly, animals, mammals, dogs are all taxa. But you know that a dog is a mammal and mammals are animals. Therefore, animals, mammals, and dogs represent taxa at different levels. That is the thing. So these all are different level thing. Okay, I'll explain you further. There is um. in the next pages there is a explanation for these things hence based on characteristics all living organisms can be classified into different taxa this process of classification is taxonomy external and internal structure this is also important external and internal structure along with the structure of cell development process and ecological information see here so this thing process and ecological information are all taxonomic studies okay and uh, ecological information of organisms are essential and form the basis of modern taxonomic studies then this thing that is uh, characterization identification classification and nomenclature are the process that are basic to taxonomy okay this is also important next thing is taxonomy is not something new human beings have always been interested in knowing more and more about 
the various kinds of organisms particularly with reference to their own use in early days human beings needed to find sources for their basic needs to for uh, of food clothing and shelter hence the earliest classification were based on the uses of various organisms human beings were since long not only interested in knowing more about different kinds of organisms and their diversities but also the relationships among them this branch of study was referred to as systematics the word systematics is derived from the latin word systema which means systematic arrangement this is also important see what is this highlight this part the word systematics is derived from the uh, latin word systema systema which means systematic arrangement of organisms and also linnaeus used system and nature as the title of this publication okay this is also necessary the scope of systematics was later enlarged to con- include identification nomenclature and classification so uh, systematics takes into account evolutionary relationship between organism this is also important that it takes into account evolutionary relationships between organism this is also an important question next is taxonomic categories so here i need to explain something that uh, there are lot of uh, units okay here it is also written i'll just uh, first let me highlight so classification is not a single step process but involves hierarchy of steps in which each step uh, represents a rank or category uh, since the category is a part of overall system uh, a taxonomic arrangement it is called the taxonomic category okay this thing taxonomic category taxonomic hierarchy and all uh, uh, categories con- together constitute the taxonomic uh, taxonomic hierarchy then each category referred to as unit of classification this also as unit of classification in fact represents a rank and is commonly termed as taxon so i'll write something here see the basic okay let me write this here are some representation that is made like uh, if we'll, if there is a question which means that basic unit of classification so can you name it what is the basic unit of classification yeah that's absolutely correct that is species so species is the basic unit of classification okay and every unit of classification are there like kingdom phylum everything i'll i'll teach you later but this is the basic unit of classification and that is what again i'm writing it that is species so you need to keep this in mind this is really really important okay next uh taxonomy categories and hierarchy can be illustrated by an example insects represent a group of organisms sharing common features like three pairs of jointed legs it means insects are recognizable uh, concrete objects which can be classified and thus were given a rank or category can you name other such groups of organisms remember groups represent ta- category category further denotes rank each rank or taxon in fact represents a unit of classification these taxonomic groups or categories are distinct biological entities and not merely morphological aggregates so this is another important thing i'll just highlight these things then you can understand it what is important is that uh, were given rank or category okay then uh, another thing that is important is here category further denotes the rank okay 
and each rank or taxon in fact represents a unit of classification this i told earlier and uh, so this much next we'll go down here taxonomical studies of all known organisms have led to the development of ca common categories such as kingdom phylum or division for plants uh, class order family genus and species all organisms including those in the plant and animal kingdoms have species as the lowest category now the question you may ask is how to place an here uh, one thing let me highlight then i'll go further so uh, common categories what are these uh, these are kingdom phylum or division this much okay species up to species and what i said the basic unit of classification is species okay so uh, another thing that i need to describe about the uh, see here two terms are there which i need to describe let me tell this okay what is this yeah so there are two terms uh, it could also come that is one is phylogeny okay phylogeny oh, it's not working again let me erase this yeah so there are one term that is known as phylogeny this marker is really yeah again so one term is phylogeny and uh, so what does this mean first let me explain this thing phylogeny means evolutionary history of organism okay this is the evolutionary history of organism and another thing is uh, ontogeny what is this this is the life history of organism got it these are two basic uh, things which is actually little bit that uh, when exam in uh, exam when questions will come you will be confused but this is so easy ontogeny means life it means life history both are histories but uh, the difference is this is life history and uh, this one and uh, this phylogeny is evolutionary history okay this is evolutionary so this is all about evolution histories okay that is so next thing that is important here um let's go to the next page so organism so now we'll study all the uh, different categories uh, specifically okay so organism in various categories the the basic requirement is the knowledge of characters of an individual or group of organism this helps in identifying similarities and dissimilarities among the individuals of the same kind of organisms as well as of other kinds of organisms so let's go move on to species taxonomic studies considered a group of individual organism with fundamental similarities as the species one should be able to distinguish um, uh, one species from other closely related species based on the distinct morphological difference okay now uh, see here a lot of examples given in ncert as i said you earlier also that you need to uh, understand these means remember these examples and you need to underline these examples because these are really important which are in the ncert so here again we have mangifera indica solanum tuberosum which is potato mangifera indica it has explained earlier that it is mango for that reason it has not written also in bracket again next is the panthera leo that is lion it's so easy not so difficult just try to remember like tell the words five times and it is so easy okay next is all the three uh, names indica tuberosum and leo 
represent the specific epithet this is only the species okay while the first word mangifera solanum panthera are genera and represents another higher level of taxon or category okay so each genus may have one or more than one specific epithets representing different organisms but having morphological similarities for example panthera has another specific epithet called tigris and solanum includes species like nigrum and melongena human beings belong to the species sapiens which is grouped in the genus homo this the scientific name thus for human being is written as homo sapiens okay so here we need to uh, highlight this part also that panthera also has another uh, uh, that is tigris and solanum nigrum also something is there and solanum melongena also is there and uh, another thing is human beings human beings are known as homo sapiens that's it so these are really important which are in the ncert okay next is genus genus comprises a group of related species which has more characters in common in comparison to species of other genera this is also an important line that is what this much yeah so genera are aggregates of closely related species for example potato and brinjal are two different species but both belong to the genus solanum okay here also there are some examples which again you need to remember the potato example potato and brinjal are two different species and both belong to the uh, this genus solanum next is lion lion has panthera leo and leopard is panthera pardus and tiger is panthera tigris okay this much and they belong to this genus which is panthera okay and there are also another genus are there the genus differs from another genus felis which uh, includes cats okay this also important anything which is present in ncert is completely important okay so here in genera there are three examples like genera means uh, genus wise three examples are there like solanum one genus uh then panthera is another genus and felis is another genus okay then family the next category family has a group of related genera with still less number of uh, similarities as compared to genus and species families are ca uh, characterized on the basis of both vegetative and reproductive features of plant species among plants for example three different genera uh, solanum petunia and datura are placed in the family solanaceae among animals for example genus panthera comprising lion tiger leopard is put along with genus felis cats in the family felidae and uh, similarly if you observe the features of a cat and a dog you will find some similarities and some differences as well they are separated into two different families that is felidae and canidae respectively so i am just uh, underlining this much and you need to remember these all things from starting from this to this so what there that uh, this is family solanaceae one family second family is canidae felidae third family is felidae that's it so you just need to remember okay next page here there is order you have seen earlier that categories like species genus and families are based on a number of similar characters generally order and other higher taxonomic categories are identified based on the aggregates of classification Uh, of characters order being a higher category is the assemblage of uh, families which exhibit a few similar characters the similar characters are less in number as compared to different genera included in a family plant families like convol volaceae solanaceae are included in the order 
polymonials mainly based on the floral characters the animal order carnivora includes families like felidae and canidae okay again this is it has two orders given this is one is solana see the, the plant families they are in the poly polymonials and the next one is this felidae canidae that is the order animal order okay carnivora that's it so order like it has shown this type of examples next class this category includes related orders for example order primata comprising monkey gorilla and gibbon uh, is placed in class mammalia along with order carnivora that includes Uh, animals like tiger cat and dog class mammalia has uh, other orders also okay so this is so simple it's it has explained so simply next is phylum classes comprising animals like fishes amphibians reptiles birds along with mammals constitute the next higher category called phylum all these based on the common features like presence of notochord and dorsal hollow neural system are included in phylum chordata in case of uh, plants classes with a few similar characteristics are assigned to a higher category called division okay so this is the thing so in plants we take uh, we tell at uh, division and in uh, animals it is phylum that's it next the most the broad category see here also it is written uh, you need to underline this thing that here uh, there is written that it is the broad category why is not happening just a second yeah so this is the broad categories uh, kingdom okay so all animal belonging into various phyla are assigned to the highest category called kingdom animalia in the classification system of animals the uh, kingdom plantae on the other hand is distinct and comprises all plants from various divisions henceforth we will refer to these two groups as animal and plant kingdoms okay so the taxonomic categories from species to kingdom have been shown in ascending order starting with species these are broad categories however taxonomists have also developed sub categories in this hierarchy to facilitate a uh, more sound and scientific placement so these are all written here next thing here here see here there is a figure which uh, has shown the taxonomic categories of hierarchy uh in arrangement in ascending order okay so this is species then genus then family order class phylum or division then kingdom okay so uh, remember this figure uh, it could also come in uh, diagram wise questions okay so there is something we need to underline here this is okay let me do here there is written that lower the taxa more are the character uh, characteristics that the members within the taxon share higher the category greater is the difficulty of determining the relationship to other taxa at the same level this thing is really important okay next here there is something yeah here this table is really really important it's it's a very important table everything you need to remember about this table see man homo sapiens homo uh, genus is homo then family is hominidae order is primata class is mammalia then phylum or division is chordata here that, that is phylum because it's an animal okay one thing here is missing actually it's not missing it it was uh, before in the uh, previous ncrt so this i need to write okay 
okay let me write here this thing okay so there is something called tulsi okay the leaf this is tulsi this is really important means actually it was before there in the previous so common name is tulsi then i'm writing the biological name okay biological no name is ossimum okay ossimum sanctum ossimum sanctum okay this is the name then then uh, then its genus is ossimum okay this is simple genus to identify it's very simple it does uh, scientific name is given then uh, family is different Fam means family is a different name so that is lamy lamy see like this so if, when uh, one trick i need to tell you i'm writing it again it's not So the family is Lamy okay so the family is Lamy AC so uh, where the, uh, wherever there is something like this AC this is known as uh, then you can know that yeah this is family okay wherever like Solon AC or uh, Mosidae then uh, Hominidae so every everywhere this type of last uh, means this is like is present okay uh, so we can know that it is family next is uh, its order order is also simple it has also one thing last so here family we know this is lamiaceae then order is lamials see this thing also present in order there will be something like ills okay this is m then this is i okay so namels so this is what order got it so everything done so this is this was actually in the old ncrt so this could also come so it's important next is taxonomical aids so taxonomic studies of various species of plants animals and other organism are useful in agriculture so uh, forestry industry and in general in knowing our bio resources and the diversity so here in this uh, thing one thing is important actually that is this the collection of actual specimens of plants and animals uh, species is essential and is prime source of taxonomic studies so it should be live okay not that something artificially made no that's not taxonomic uh, taxonomical aids okay so the first taxonomical aid is herbarium so this herbarium is really important and it's each line is important okay here so the first line let me highlight which is really important that is herbarium is a storehouse of collected plant specimens that are dried braised and preserved on sheets okay this is the first thing which is important then further sheets are arranged so this see this is herbarium okay further sheets are arranged according to a universally accepted system of classification this is also important see each line is important i told universally accepted system of classification then these specimens along with their description on herbarium sheets uh, become a storehouse or repository for future use also so this is also important that why it is stored this is for future fuel use then the herbarium sheets also carry a label providing information about date uh, and place of collection english local and botanical names this question actually came also in neat so that is the herbarium the herbarium sheets also carry a label providing information about date and place of collection collection english local and botanical names family collector's name etc 
okay and another thing is important here is this quick referral system this is important thing so this is what is a herbarium herbarium also serves quick referral system in taxonomic studies okay i'll uh, explain you one thing here that is see uh, you need to also know one thing that uh, what is the uh, sheet that is required here so the sheet is me measurement of the sheet is 29 into 41 okay this is the required amount <coughs> of sheet in centimeters this is and uh, in inches i also show you in inches inches is 16.5 into 11.5 inches okay this is actually also important because this could also be asked in the questions okay so uh, this is also important and it's done now i'll show you another thing that is the process of herbarium okay so what is the process of herbarium uh, the first process is dry uh, collection first process is collection as we as we have read just this is i'm describing this thing first uh, process is collection next process is drying okay and the uh, third process is uh, process and third process is i uh, just pasting on the sheets that's it so i'm not writing it i think i hope you have understood this okay so next is botanical gardens these specialized gardens have so what is botanical gardens we'll study that now these specialized gardens have collection of living plants for reference plant species in these gardens are grown for identification purposes and each plant is labeled indicating its botanical or scientific name and its family the famous botanical gardens are at q england indian botanical garden havra india and at national botanical research institute lucknow india okay so here the important thing which you need to remember is that uh, the first thing is that here living plants uh, are uh, here a collection of living plants are kept uh, for uh, for reference so just a minute yeah next the important point is that um, it's uh, what is written there so here there is written the botanical or scientific name and its family that's it next is uh, where the botanical gardens are where the famous uh, botanical gardens located this is also very important because it has a lot of probability to come these questions the famous botanical garden one is at q uh, then another is indian botanical garden havda another is national botanical research institute lucknow in india so mainly focus on india but also remember this q indian one why uh, what's the problem this is england only just one is there so it's so uh, so nice to remember this thing it's very easy next let's go to museum so biological museums are generally set up in educational institutes such as schools and colleges museums have collection of preserved plant and animal specimens for study and reference specimens are preserved in the containers or jars in preserved solutions plant and animal specimens may also be preserved as dry specimens insects are preserved in insect boxes after killing pinning and uh, killing and pinning so that's it next um, larger animals like birds and mammals are usually stuffed and preserved museums often have collection of skeletons and animals too so this paragraph is really easy okay now i will show you what are the important points to remember 
so that is the first thing is that museum have this thing is important that is museum have collection of preserved plants and animal specimens for study and reference specimen and this thing that these they are preserved in preservative solutions next is plant and animal speci uh, specimens ha may also have um, may also be preserved as dry specimens this is also possible so this dry specimen this point is also important then insects are preserved in insect boxes after killing after collecting killing and penning so this thing this three things are important for uh, for this is used for insect and larger animals cannot be kept like that so larger animals like birds and mammals are usually stuffed and preserved okay this thing and museums another thing also found in museums are skeletons of animals that's it next page let's go to next page yeah zoological parks these are the places where wild animals are kept in protected environments under human care and which enable us to learn about their food habitats and behavior all animals in the zoo are provided as far as possible the condition similar to their natural habitats children love visiting these parks commonly called zoos so this is very important uh, the the thing which is important that is uh, that here in the zoo they try to provide the same habitat which their natural habitat suppose a particular animal is having particular uh, natural uh, habitat so they used to provide that habitat okay so they try to provide that thing so uh, here this thing is that these are the places where animals are kept uh, in protected environment this is also human care also given and also they they are provided with a natural habitat okay this thing this much is important and their food habits and behavior are observed so this so the people can nicely observe that what are the habits what are the food habits of uh, of that of that particular animal okay see here are some pictures given of these animals next is key so key is another taxonomical aid used for identification of plants and animals so the question which came from here is this that key is another taxonomical aid used for identification of plants and animals based on similarities and and dissimilarities that's it this question has already been asked and the next question which are uh, important and can and may come in the examination are these that this couplet question that uh, the the keys are based on the contrasting character generally in a pair called couplet this thing is important and another thing is it represents the choice made between two opposite options this results in acceptance of only one and rejection of the other each statement of the key is called lead, a lead so this is also important so i'm underlining this one also that a lead this thing also you need to read once that each statement in the key is called a lead next separate uh, taxonomic uh, keys are required for each taxonomic category such as family genus species for identification purposes keys are generally analytical in nature and another thing which is important is that uh, suppose there is a question which asks you that keys are generally in analytical in nature so you have to uh, means uh, uh, if it is uh, true or false then you have to put false because it is uh, um, analytical it's not in analytical so these are the main things which you need to focus in a question okay so next let's go to the next page here another some uh, common things some very uh, these are really important actually see the first thing is flora Uh, manuals monographs and catalogs so these are the four things are some other means of recording description so i can nicely tell you what are these so suppose the, this is very easy that uh, we are reading this thing it's very easy we got it yeah this is the definition that's it 
but when this question will come in the mcq form uh, in the type of match the following or something like that you cannot identify it's really difficult that time so you need to just focus something like flora is something which uh, which has uh, which tells us about the habitat and distribution that's it and it has also index and manuals is what manuals is used for identification it means that is something which is identification of the particular organism next is the monographs monographs is taxon full information so the full information is given about the taxon here and uh, that is the only thing which gives a comprehensive uh, information okay it has a lot it, it is a long information it's completely all about one taxon okay next catalogs so catalogs is not given in this ncrt but it has not described here but still you need to know this meaning because why because it is there in the ncrt okay so that is what that is any book author description uh, which uh, which uh, tells about that the description uh, means see there is a book any book it tells about the description it gives a description about any book or author in alphabetical order that also you need to keep in your mind so these are the four things and these are there uh, means there uh, if the question will come as match the following so you need to uh, keep in mind about these things so let's read this paragraph what is this so flora manuals monographs and catalogs are some other means of recording description they also help in correct identification flora contains the actual account of habitat and distribution of plants of a given area these provide the index to the plant species found in a particular area manuals are used and useful in uh, providing information for identification of names of species found in an area and monographs contain information on any one taxon so that's it so that is all about this now let's go to the summary summary is actually important every chapter it has a uh, summary and you should not uh, leave it because it's really important because question come from that also and here uh, let me read the first then i'll tell you what are all important in this the living world is rich in variety millions of plants and animals have been identified and described but a large number still remains unknown the a very range of organisms in terms of size color habitat physiological and morphological features make us seek the defining characteristic of living organisms in order to facilitate the study of kinds and diversity of organisms biologists have evolved certain rules and principles for identification nomenclature and classification of organisms the branch of knowledge dealing with these aspects is referred to as taxonomy the taxonomic studies of various species and of plants and animals are usually in agriculture forestry industry and in general for knowing our bio resources and their diversity the basics of taxonomy like identification naming and classification of organisms are universally evolved under international codes so as i have said that icbn and iczn then based on the resemblance and the distinct differences each organism is identified and assigned a correct scientific or biological name comprising two words as per the binomial system of uh, nomenclature an organism represents or copies or occupy sorry or occupies a uh, place or position in the system of classification there are many categories or ranks and are generally referred to as taxonomic categories or taxa all the categories constitute a taxonomic hierarchy taxonomists have developed a variety of taxonomic aids to facilitate identification naming and classification of organisms these studies are carried out from the actual specimens 
which uh, which are collected from the uh, field and preserved as referrals in the form of herbaria museums and in botanical gardens and zoological parks it requires social, special techniques for collection of and preservation of specimens in herbaria and museums so live specimens on the other hand of plants and animals are found in botanical gardens or in zoological parks so taxonomists also prepare and disseminate information through this manuals and monographs for further taxonomic studies taxonomic keys are tools that help in identification based on characteristics so these are the things which are written now here one thing that is very important that is uh, see now just highlight this thing that taxonomist also prepare and disseminate information through manuals and monographs for further taxonomic studies this is really important actually this is the most important thing about the monographs manuals okay because see scientist means the taxonomist they refer to these okay so if which makes us clear that this is actually important it is given in, in the ncrd in a corner but still it's very important okay so this is all about the chapter now thank you so much so i'll upload the next videos also thank you